Hi, my name is Cold Bear and let's start with Total War Warhammer 3. You can play this game for free this whole weekend, so if you are a fan of strategy games, it's like a present sent to you by the potato salad god himself. I bought the game when it was initially released, so I can briefly tell you about my experience. I was pleasantly surprised about the grand scale of the game. Huge maps filled with stuff to discover, interesting story and the thing I love the most, various creatures and warriors at your command. If you are not familiar with the games of the franchise, keep in mind that the game consists of 4x elements and huge, sometimes absolutely enormous and computer power hungry real-time battles. And those battles are not easy. I quickly realized that I am not a combat genius of any kind and had to actually read and study strengths and weaknesses of every unit, get familiar with their speed, hit points, attack power, visit their mamas, take them on a hot day to some fancy restaurant and, well, I already said too much. But like literally, I won some tutorial battles but my army was in shatters. I wasn't happy with the result at all. So keep in mind that this game, at least at the beginning, has a huge learning curve and you will probably be watching some guide videos on YouTube. So even if it's a free game this weekend, it's a huge time investment and you know, time is money. Frostpunk this is a society survival game. You are a ruler of the last city on Earth. It is your duty to manage both its citizens and infrastructure. And here optimization and resource management often clash with empathy and thoughtful decision making. If your population is huge, they need more food, so it's nice if some of the people die out doing some harsh labor. Then you get more food for the rest of them, but that will put you in a hard position as a leader. Well, you can go full retard and become a dictator, but then people will rise against you. But then then you can just beat them and make them obey. Send their children to work in mines and in general let a few people die to save the rest, even against their own will, but you know, for the greater good. Inside and Limbo Bundle. What a great deal this is! Two legendary horror-themed platformers for this price is a must-have. Even if you are not into platformers, these games are like a gateway drug into this beautiful world. If you played Little Nightmares, I would say that Limbo and Inside are members of the same genre, or more likely a subgenre: creepy but beautiful world, strange creatures and death on every corner. Games are really hard, I can't even remember how many times I died in Limbo for example, but it didn't bother me when I played. You respawn in a near by place and can instantly fail again. If you are in doubt, keep in mind that both of these games have a demo version available to try for free, so you won't be risking anything. Although I must warn you, if you don't like puzzles, avoid these games, because you will need to use your brain more than once here, so make sure you have one. Dead by Daylight this is a multiplayer 4 vs 1 horror game where one player takes the role of the savage killer and the other 4 players play as survivors, trying to escape the killer and avoid being caught, tortured and killed. Survivors play in third person have the advantage of better situational awareness. You know, when you go near the corner of the house, you can see what is happening without exposing your silly face and the killer plays in first person. I personally think that this concept came from studying nature. Various herbivores have peripheral vision and the predators are best at seeing what's in front of them, so they took this concept and implemented it here. Anyway, the survivor's goal in each encounter is to escape the killing ground without getting caught by the killer, something that sounds easier than it is, especially when the environment changes every time you play. And if you play as a killer, you must help survivors to escape safely, except not. Moonlighter here you are a shopkeeper who wants to keep your customers happy by providing them with various goods. You can put items on sale, set their price carefully, manage gold reserves, recruit assistants and upgrade the shop. But be careful though, some shady individuals may want to steal your precious wares. The trickiest part is getting the goods. You have to swim over river Namunas to Kaliningrad, get contraband and then swim back to European Union to get rich. No, of course I'm kidding. You have to go to ancient passages to different realms and dimensions, fight various enemies and collect items from their dead called maimed bodies. So romantic. Anyway, here the part where you hack, slash and die begins. People on Steam are saying that the game is fun, aesthetically pleasing and relaxing. Yeah, relaxing. So forget about big challenges, it's an easier game in general. But hey, it's nice to have something not souls like hardcore from time to time after all. Subnautica 
When I first tried to play Subnautica, I had some mixed feelings. I don't really like to craft things in games. Well, I do, but only when it's not the main way to obtain things in general. And all that coral and fish gathering was really, really boring for me. I wanted to explore, and the game prevented me from doing that because I had no means of diving into the depths, and if I tried, I always died. So for me, it took about two actual years to get all the equipment I needed for exploring. I can only imagine that some kid can do that in a day or so, but that's not the way for me. I got bored really quickly every time I turned the game on. But that boredom was eradicated one day when I found some really interesting things deep below that, you know, I couldn't reach. So I finally understood why this game was so hard to play for me. It gave me no motivation to proceed. And then when I finally found one, Subnautica transformed into a beautiful world. So addicting that in a week I spent more time here than in the past two years. And I continued to do that for weeks to come. So for all the new players, just carry on with that boredom part and you will be rewarded. I can without a doubt say that this game is 10 coldest beers out of 10. You have all my recommendations. Although keep in mind that even if it looks so colorful and pretty, it has a lot of horror elements and is not meant for kids. Rift Breaker here you are, the Rift Breaker, an elite scientist commando inside a powerful mecha suit. Ooh la la. You have entered a one-way portal to a distant planet at the far reaches of the Milky Way. You have a purpose of building up a base that will allow travels back to Earth and continue colonization. So you are tasked to construct a two-way rift back to Earth, because living on a planet without cold, refreshing beer or potato salad is painful and that shouldn't even be a legal thing. Although you encounter a bit of a bigger problem problem than the absence of beer, which is monsters, thousands of them. The game itself is a hybrid between StarCraft, Diablo and Satisfactory, a really great and entertaining game. The Forgotten City this game, as a lot of gamers point out, is a Groundhog Day in an ancient city. The mechanic here is simple. Everyone around you is dying for unknown reasons and you have to stop it. If you fail, and you will fail more than once, you can just go to the portal and restart the day over and over again until you solve the problem of dying so nobody dies anymore. If you think about it, this is a roguelite game, just story-based instead of combat. And it's really one of the best adventure games there is. I'm not gonna lie, if you go to Steam, you will see the overwhelmingly positive review score. Also, fun fact, this game started as a Skyrim mod a long time ago and it was so well received it became a separate kick-ass game. Kingdoms and Castles that is no doubt one of the most original names you can think of when creating a medieval strategy game about kingdoms and castles. Oh wait, no it's not. So here your kingdom must survive a living and dangerous world. Will the viking raiders do some pillaging to your villages, or are they stopped full of arrows at the castle gates? Does a dragon torch your granary and your people will die of starvation in the winter, or will you be able to fill it with arrows as well? Not the granary, the dragon. The success of your kingdom depends solely on your skill as a city and castle planner. So, as always, your villagers are doomed. Anyway, make sure your peasants are fed in the winter and healed of plagues. Build churches to keep their minds washed and taverns to keep them happy. Send out woodcutters to collect wood. Mm -hmm. Set up stone quarries to build your castles and farm the land efficiently so your town can grow and thrive. Also, in case of fire, your townsfolk can efficiently pee on it. And now let us check out what is discounted on GOG.com this weekend. Great Souls-like action RPG Steel Rising is for half the price. Horizon Zero Dawn Complete Edition has a great discount as well. Also one of the best ever CRPGs, Solasta, Crown of the Magister and many other games await you today. Click on my safe affiliate link in the description below and explore the greatness on your own.